let's try to understand one thing how we really evolve so we have this great uh, theory of evolution by darwin and from there so many other theories have come and those of you who know genetics well they, you would know that they say that it's the basically the genes which are evolving body is not evolving some say body is evolving yeah, those things are there we don't understand much of these things but what we understand is india doesn't go much for evolution of uh, the body evolution of the genes and evolution of mind we go by evolution of the spirit when we say evolution of the spirit we don't mean to say that spirit is limited and that it slowly gains in knowledge no it's not that it is about when we say that evolution of spirit it essentially means that manifestation of the power of the spirit in the mind evolution of the spirit we don't accept we the hindus we don't accept darwin's theory in toto we accept the first part that is evolution but beyond that evolution of the species and survival of the fittest no those things we might accept as catchy phrases but accepting them literally no we don't according to the hindu system of thought the spirit which dwells within every body wants to manifest itself and when it wants to manifest itself it has to manifest not through body it might have tried as darwin says like dinosaurus and all it was a failure and it tries to manifest through mind unfortunately what happens spirit is not in its full glory whenever it is an embodied self whenever it is within a body it identifies itself with the body senses and the mind and because it identifies with the limited it tends to move in a never ending circle in a rut here is this room just imagine that it's a huge well where different ruts are made you might have seen such uses where ruts are made in earlier times the indian roads used to be unpaved bullock carts used to go and there used to be ruts now every time another bullock cart came it had to go through that rut the expression in hindi is leak leak par palna chalna the same old rut you have to go on go go through that only now if you think of this well a huge round well or square room where there is a rut and something is moving following newton's first law of motion all that newton's first law of motion is directly related but the idea is applicable newton's first law of motion says that a body in motion will continue its state of motion something similar happens with spirit when it is in a body it keeps moving in a circle the way moon is orbiting around this earth and earth is orbiting around the sun and planets are orbiting around its star it just goes on moving 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 when this movement started we don't know why god created all this we have no answer what god wants of all this we have no answer why because god is infinite this creation has been going on since infinity there was not a no there was no single point of time or single point in space when this creation came into existence it's a common mistake we all make why god created well it has been going on so why bother and to answer this question one has to ask god or one has to know the mind of god unless you know the mind of god you cannot know why god did, did this or god that did that now when you are moving in that circle when you are moving in that rut it is just not possible for the mind or for the body to go beyond that rut 
There's a lower limit to it and there's a higher limit to it. If you have to move, you can move only a little lower, you can go a little lower, you can go a little higher. Particularly when it comes to going a little higher. Something you can imagine, here is this gravity. It bounds everything that is there. If you want to escape this gravity, you need to have that special force known as escape velocity. If you want to go beyond this orbit, you need an external force as Newton also says. If you want to change its state from motion to rest or from rest to motion, you need an external force. And a body can never act on itself. Never, never, never. It's just not possible. Nothing can act on itself. As Newton's third law of motion says, every action has an equal and opposite re reaction. So when you want to act on itself, that itself will react on you and it will not let you do anything. Whole thing will get neutralized. For the same reason, if you want to evolve beyond a point, that evolution is just not pos possible unless there is an evolutionary push. For example, there is a dog. A dog knows how to hunt if it were in wild. It knows how to hunt, it knows how to survive, and it knows how to pro procreate basic things. But if you want the dog to learn some lessons, when you want to teach a dog some tricks, it requires a human mind. If you want a horse to be trained for different purposes, you need a human mind for that. That means external intervention is required. Now I am giving you these examples and I am not trying to prove something through these examples. I am stating a fact and just to make those facts un understandable, I am giving these examples. Exactly like that. We, the human beings, we are limited within our survival of empire of the mind. As an animal is tied down completely to its uh, very basic instincts, very basic instincts of survival, just like that we the human beings, we are definitely superior, there is no doubt about it, particularly because we have a very special mind and our mind force is so capable that it can do anything. But when it comes to Transcending this mind, when you want to go beyond the empire of the mind, beyond the realm of the mind, you cannot do. For that, you need to have an external force that will keep kick you into a higher orbit. Where from will come that? If you want to light a fire, you need flame. That flame is external thing. Or if you simply have two sticks you need to rub. Some external activity is required. It cannot get inflamed on its own. Again, this is an example to, to just exemplify something to make one idea clear. Normally we know that a guru, a saint or a sage he can ignite its spark of spirituality within you, within me, or within any person. Now, where from he himself got? He was also a human being. This chain continues. You can go on talking about your guru and guru of that person, guru of that person. Now, somewhere, somewhere up the chain, it has to reach that point where the person who imparted the education for the first time, he was not a human being. He could not be a human being. He has to be a divine being. Unless a person is divine, he cannot impart divinity into you. Unless you are a man of mind, unless you are an expert, you cannot train a horse. And you cannot train a dog. 
your mind has to be a little evolved your mind has to be a little pure to to understand these things on the other hand god himself has to come down now this idea that god alone can impart spirituality this is inbuilt in every religion you look back at any religion any religion you will see that even a person who was considered saint initially for example jesus uh, was not considered a prophet initially or better example is guru nanak who was uh, considered a saint but now six considered him as an incarnation because they feel that the impetus that comes from such gurus that impetus impetus can never come from human mind only can only god can give that impetus now once you once you get this idea once this idea is clear it is so easy to build the entire thing something like reverse technology if you look at something and then open the system remove the parts rearrange them and now it is ready for reverse engineering now you know how the process came something like that happens and then the sages particularly the sage poets came up with a very clear idea of how spirituality descends amidst humanity it is not about creation it is about spirituality coming